Yeah, we stopped at the general store to use the restroom. Here, we got some park ranger hanging out. And what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm deaf as a frog. Oh, you gotta speak up. Dead frog. What are you doing? I'm sitting here being deaf. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad we came by. Looks like you got a bunch of cool stuff. Um, I'm a flint napper. I'm a retired archaeologist, and first of all, none of this is from the park, and so with the exception of a few of the fancier ones on this whiteboard, these are all things that I've made. Okay, so don't come for him. He, he's not taking these from the park. Wow. That's really neat. You're very good at your craft. And flint napping is the fine art of making stone tools. The Europeans uh, got interested in this long before we did. They were studying their own ancestors. We were still killing the people and stealing their land. We didn't care how they made things. So flint napping is kind of corrupt German. Knopfen des flint to strike the rock. And in this case, this is the mule deer antler baton. This is the part close to the skull. Ah. This is the crown, which is more like ivory. And it's used to remove material to effectively straighten the piece out and give it a more lentic like convex or lenticular shape. So it's kind of an early stage in, in making an arrowhead or the main stage in making a big spear point or knife. The uh, deer antler is soft enough to deliver the force gently. If I did this with a steel hammer, it would just shatter. Oh yeah, okay. And it's a little heavier and more dense than comparable bone. The idea is the flakes are supposed to cross the midline and thin the piece out as well as shaping it. Different rocks break differently? Yes. To be a, a useful tool stone, it has to be microcrystalline, crystal, crypto crystalline, or homogeneous. Uh, glass breaks the same way as obsidian. But glass is crummy obsidian. <laughs> it's only about 20% silica, whereas real obsidian is 60% or better. We add soda lime and borax and all sorts of other things to the sand, the frit, so that it melts at a lower temperature. Where do you get your obsidian? Um, I travel the west. I'm here in the park for six months and then I live in a motorhome and it somehow finds its way to different obsidian sources. My current favorite one is near Beaver, Utah. There's a place where they were mining the obsidian for landscaping rock. And I use it for uh, magic rock. I give it to the little, little kids. Oh, okay. And it's solar powered magic rock. But in strong light, that'll flash gold. I'm a big little kid. I'm a big little kid. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Whoa. Well, you put that on your windowsill and it collects the solar energy to do the magic and it will make you stronger or smarter or more beautiful. I'm so excited. I got a rock. <laughs> this one is a little more obvious. If you wiggle that one in the sunlight, it will really flash gold at you. Yeah. So I'm cutting through my neck. Plus, when I did anything, it would break. 
And then this is all the points. Very nice. Look, he used to wear this. Nope. One more over. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, one more over. Oh, one more here. Goes with the ugly rock. Did you see? He you missed, used to. He uh, used to wear it. You used to wear that? Yep. That's some weight. And then let me show these. This is what Mary was talking about. Look how they go from big. And on that board, all of those points are made out of obsidian. Look at that. Some of it from the Milford source. And, uh, Get down to the little guys. Reddish place. brown stuff comes from Glass Butte, Oregon. Near Burns. Oh, I know where that is. I drive through Burns um, to go to Bend. To go to Bend. I go to Burns. Well, um, I'll have a record. I'll check it out next time I go. <gasps> There's the next video when I go to Oregon. I go to Oregon a couple times a year.